Well, it's time to start sending out these Christmas cards, and I have a list somewhere. You guessed it. It's in OneNote. Stay with me today, and I'll show you how I'm using an Excel spreadsheet to help keep my Christmas card list up to date. Well, hi everyone. I'm Crystal from A Crystal Clear Life, where we focus on planning, organizing, and living a more simplified life. And today I'm going to continue on that holiday uh, December journey with you. And today we're going to talk about something a little bit different. Uh, I want to talk to you about a Christmas card list and how I use Excel through OneNote to keep that Christmas card list. And so without further ado, if that sounds interesting to you, please go ahead and hit that like button before we get started. Uh, make sure you subscribe, turn your notifications all the way on, and let's get right into this video. I have a lot to share with you today. All right, well, as you can see here on my screen, uh, I have from my um, holiday planner that I got from DCP Digitals a couple of years ago. Uh, links for everything will be in the description box below. She does have a current one out for this year uh, as well, but I like the colors of this one, so I'm sticking with it. But one of the pages that she has in that planner is her holiday card list. And I liked this version of her holiday card list because, you know, it had like little fake envelopes there that you could, you know, go in and handwrite people's names on uh, just to say who might be on your Christmas list for that particular year. And if I were to use this particular page, that's what I would do. I would just put, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Nelson, Tom and Michelle who live down the street. I probably would even make different lines or different rows for, you know, neighbors and church folks and club members and that kind of thing. So I wouldn't miss anybody. All right. But you know me, <laughs> I don't do anything simply, do I? No, today I want to show you how through OneNote you can embed an Excel spreadsheet for things like your holiday card list. All right. Now, what I did is I went through and I took just a PDF planner page uh, that I wanted to use as a background. Do you have to do this step? Absolutely not. Okay. Uh, I just did it because again, I like the look, I like the color, I like the notebooks to kind of contain uh, things on the screen for me. Um, you can make this uh, notebook background bigger if you want, again, because it is just a graphic. So I can take it and make it, you know, as big or I can stretch it out as wide as I need it to be. All right. And we'll adjust all of that once we get the spreadsheet in there and we know how it's going to look. Okay. So for now, I'm just going to leave it the way that it is. All right. And I'm going to do some work out here on the side. So let's scroll over here to the side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the insert menu, which is right here at the top of your ribbon bar. And you see all the way in the middle, it says spreadsheet. When I click on that down arrow, it says, do I want to add an existing Excel spreadsheet? Uh, which would be something that I may have created in years past. Or for today's purposes, I'm going to insert a new Excel spreadsheet to show you how all of this works. All right. Now, when I do that, let me move this up so you can see. You will notice that the Excel spreadsheet that it creates is called Holiday Card List. Well, you might be asking, how did it get that name? It's the page title that I have used on this page. So if I go back up here to the top, you see it says holiday card list. So when it created that particular spreadsheet, it created it calling it holiday card list. Okay. All right. You see here that there is a link to the holiday card list spreadsheet. And when I look down here at the table or the spreadsheet, there's a little edit button. If I click on that edit button, it will take me into Excel and show me the spreadsheet. That's the next step. And 
when Excel comes up, I'm going to make this full screen so that you can see it better. Uh, when Excel comes up, you see that it has just this basic little, you know, spreadsheet up here in the corner. At this point, I can make the spreadsheet say anything that I want. But because I am doing this for a holiday card list, you know, some sort of mailing list, I want to keep it very basic. So up here in this first column, I'm going to put first name. And in the next column, I am going to put last name. And then I'm going to put address. And some people that I know on my list live in an apartment or they have a secondary, you know, address line. So I'm going to need that. Then I want the city name and I want the state that they live in and I want their zip code. And then I also want to tab over, I want to add uh, another field here. or two, because what I want to do is I want to have a place to record uh, when I send cards. So I'm going to write card 2023, and I can even go over here in this next one, and I will already have it set up for card for 2024, okay? And my plan for that is simply to do an S, if I send them a card, and an R, if I receive a card, okay? So that's going to be my code, S and R, send and receive, all right? Now, that's really it. That's really all I need to do, but I do want to make sure that I make these columns a little bit wider uh, so that I have room to put somebody's completed first name. Um, let's see. So to do that, I'm going to go in here, grab this cell. I'm going to make it a little bit wider. And same for last name, make it a little bit wider. And again, I can always adjust these as I need to, but for now, I just kind of want to get an idea, um, you know, of how it might look. City names, I know that some people have wide city names, so I'm going to do that. The state can be very small because it's usually just two letters. Zip code is okay. I want the title in there. And then card, that works out fine, okay? That's great. All right. Now, what I need to do at this point is I need to save this file. So I'm going to go up here to file and I'm going to go down to save. Uh, actually, let's do save as. Okay. And when I do save as, you can see it says holiday card list here and it lists the spreadsheet number. And I can either save it to my PC or I can save it to OneDrive. I probably will save it to OneDrive. Um, just because that's easier, you know, to be able to find it from other devices and that kind of thing. Whatever works for you is fine. And we're going to leave it saved as an Excel spreadsheet. Okay. All right. So let's hit save. Okay. Now we have our file saved. All right. Now when we, let me minimize this and we will go back and look and see what happened in OneNote. All right, so back here in OneNote, what you see is I have that file. Let's move it over here in the middle of the screen. And you see we have first name, last name, address, apartment. Uh, state is kind of skinny, zip code. Uh, we have card 2023, card 2024, and our little code there, send and receive. Okay, that works great. So far, so good. All right, let's go back and edit a few more things because... I might want this to look more like a table with, you know how I like my table shading and stuff at the top. So let's make it look more like a table. Let's go back and edit again. And that will take me back to the Excel spreadsheet. Okay. And I can simply click in, uh, let's see, I don't need it to be quite that wide, but I might like a few more rows. Like so. Okay, and I want to display this as a table. Okay, so what I'm going to do now that I have the area marked out that I want, I can never remember where the table feature is, so I'm going to go up here to the uh, search feature at the top, and I'm simply going to type table, and it's going to say format as a table. That's what I want, so I'm going to click on that. And when I say format as a table, 
Uh, it's going to give me all of these choices and I am going to go with green because Christmas. Uh, and let's see, do I want the every other row shaded? Yeah, that might be nice. That might be easy to read. I can always change it uh, if that does not work for me. Okay. Uh, then when I say create the table, I get this little box and it says, is this the area that you want to create? And it says my table has headers. I'm going to put a little check box there and that's going to give me headers at the top. Then I can say, okay. All right. And now I have this very nice table shaded appropriately, every other line to keep it easy for me to track. Uh, and I have all of these little drop down arrows. Now, the thing that I love about using tables and the drop down arrows is I can just go in and add any data that I want. And then I can go here to this little drop down arrow and say sort from A to Z. So maybe I want them in alphabetical order, uh, let's say by last name. So I can go to the last name column, sort A to Z, and that will give me all the Adamses and at the top and all the uh, Ziegfelds at the bottom. Or I could go by first name and sort that alphabetical. So I would, I would have all of my Alice's at the top and all my Tanya's at the bottom. Okay. All right. So I like, uh, being able to sort, uh, the tables that way. I think that is great. Okay. All right. Again, I do not have my auto save on, which I could and should do, but for now, I'm just going to go down and say, save that file. And now let's minimize this. We'll pop back over to OneNote. Let's put Excel over here on this side and we'll put OneNote over here on this side make it full screen so that you can see that spreadsheet that we created in OneNote and modified in Excel has updated and is modified now in OneNote. Okay. So if I wanted to then go back uh, and edit and put information in, you see that uh, the Excel spreadsheet opens up over here and I can start typing first name. So let's say we're going to do Timmy, um, his name is Timmy Bottom, and he lives uh, on Hollow Street. And his apartment number is 13, and he lives in Lower Pindell, and that is in the state of Delaware. And his zip code is, I'm making things up here, by the way, if you can't tell and so on and so forth. So uh, as you go through, if I wanted to add a couple more people, I could do that. Okay. And just to show you then, if I wanted to alphabetize these um, by first letter, you can do that. So then Allison goes up there and Timmy's on the bottom. Last name, I can also sort A to Z. So it changes Timmy back to the top and Allison to the bottom. And I think all of that is great. All right. And again, uh, let's say if I save this file, save, then you see those changes come right over here into OneNote. Okay. All right. So I think for the moment we are done with Excel. So let's get rid of that. And we will make uh, OneNote full screen again, just to make it easier for you guys to see. Okay. Now I have this spreadsheet that I can move into place. I can put it on my page. Uh, if I'd like to do that, make it look, uh, the way that I want it to look, that is all fine. What you have to be careful of, and I have been known to do this is I think, Oh, I'm just going to come in here and edit this file right here on OneNote. I have to remember to hit the edit button to go back uh, to Excel to keep that spreadsheet up to date. Okay. All right. This up here is a link to that particular spreadsheet and where it was created and all of that kind of thing. If you don't like it up here at the top of your spreadsheet, you could go in and uh, grab that and put it down at the bottom. Okay. So that your spreadsheet is kind of on the top, but if you need to get to that file, uh, you have it down there at the bottom. And you know, I think that's pretty cool. You see my background here is now moving around. If I want to make this a little bit wider to encompass the whole thing, I could do that uh, so that it fits the spreadsheet a little bit better. 
that works out pretty good. Then when I'm ready for this graphic to stay in place, I go up here and say set picture as background. Now my notebook is not going to move. My spreadsheet is still able to move if I want it to. Uh, and I am still able to go back and edit uh, into, um, you know, Excel as I need to. So what I like to do to keep myself organized is as Christmas cards or holiday cards come in and I open them and display them, usually back there where the dartboard is at the moment, uh, I usually put them on that uh, door so that I can see them a lot during, during the uh, day as I'm moving around. I just stack all the envelopes in one place. And then at the end of the holiday season, I will come back in and update my Excel spreadsheet uh, and say, yes, I received a card from this person, you know, put my R in that column uh, as needed and also check their address and make sure there's not been any changes of name or address, apartment numbers, that kind of thing. So you can see the practical application for being able to use an Excel spreadsheet right in your um, OneNote notebook. I think it's very, very handy myself. And actually for 2024, I think my health and habits that I've been tracking, I usually track those on a monthly uh, basis. I think I'm going to continue to track them on a monthly basis, but I think I'm going to have that linked back to an Excel spreadsheet so that I can track things a little bit easier and I can start to look for trends to see, you know, how my weight is going up or down or up or down or up or down like it always does, or how my blood sugar numbers are doing, my blood pressure, my sleep hours, all of that kind of stuff. I think it would be kind of cool to be able to track that and maybe make some charts and that kind of thing. Okay. All right. Well, today I just really wanted to give you a brief overview of how you can insert uh, it's an Excel spreadsheet in your OneNote to track important things like contacts or data or, you know, any of those kinds of things uh, and keep it right here in OneNote and have that great link to that Excel spreadsheet. I think that's a great thing and I think it's going to be very helpful. I still may go up here and fill out with my pen all of the people that I want to send uh, cards to, like I said, grouping them by uh, you know, church groups, school groups, that kind of thing. Uh, but then the, when it comes down to the meat and bones of the addresses and all of that kind of stuff, I think I'm going to keep that in a spreadsheet. And the great thing about OneNote is their pages are limitless in size. So I can just keep stacking things one on top of the other uh, and not have to have all of these different pages uh, in my notebook to go and look at. All right. Well, here we go again. Another great uh, function that OneNote has uh, that I think makes it the perfect life management tool. If you have found this video helpful, again, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Uh, that like button is the most important button on the screen, I think, for YouTube. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you have not already. Turn your notifications all the way on so you don't miss out on any of the things that we will be learning uh, as we go through December. Up next is setting up that 2024 notebook, uh, and you're welcome to come along on that journey as well. Until next time, here's hoping that you can live a more simplified and organized life through better planning. I use OneNote. <laughs> Until next time, take care, have a happy holiday, no matter what holidays you might be celebrating, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye.